es eh, al final una empresa de gama. Es lo que te hacen, como estaba comentando, para testar muchas enfermedades neuronales y demás. Y la, o sea, que es como un, un test científico de los que usan en hospitales y lo que está midiendo es tu frecuencia neuronal, o sea, las conexiones que está haciendo tu cerebro. Y una de las cosas interesantes que me ha mencionado David, pero también me parece que es interesante, es que el cerebro funciona igual en todo el mundo. O sea, entonces, seas de la raza que seas, seas del país que seas, no tiene nada que ver con la cultura, o sea, es, eh, cómo funciona el cerebro, cómo produce tus reacciones magnéticas y demás, es igual en todo el mundo. O sea, es, estamos hablando de medir el cuerpo humano, igual que el corazón, el, el, el funcionar los latidos y tal, es igual para toda la raza humana, eh, cómo funciona el cerebro es igual en toda la raza humana. Por eso las conclusiones que se sacan de este tipo de estudios no tienen que ver ni con cultura, ni, o sea, tiene que ver con cultura eh, cómo puedas reaccionar ante lo que te están enseñando, pero cómo funciona tu cerebro y qué, qué parte del cerebro se activa. Porque lo que mide no es solo, eh, es que están por toda la cabeza, lo que mide no es solo si se activa o no el cerebro, lo que mide es dónde se activa. Y lo que tienen, o sea, que eh, sabemos, tenemos un mapa del cerebro que sabemos qué hay en cada parte del cerebro. O sea, si se activa una parte o se activa otra cuando está viendo el anuncio, o sea, que no solo mide eh, que, es, que esté reaccionando, sino que está midiendo también qué parte de tu cerebro reacciona. I was just explaining that this is like what would you get in a hospital when they are measuring like yeah. sort of, um, illness and whatever, and that there is no uh, bound by cultural references or anything like that because yeah. the human brain is the same for the whole human brain. Right. So that's and in fact, we're working with um, trying to get it medically approved, so it'll make a big difference to managing patients, if you imagine. So they won't have to come into hospital, they can be managed from home um, once this kind of equipment is um, more available. So, it costs a lot easier. But here you can see the signals coming from the sensors. Now, now the first thing to understand is that the signal that's really got rich data that we are interested in are these very tiny squiggles here. And I can magnify them and make them bigger for you. Um, you know, these are the signals that have got all the rich data for us. The big signals is noise. Okay, it's not interesting information for us. And so the first thing we've got to get right with this technique is to remove the noise. First of all, make sure we limit noise, but also to remove the noise. So um, if I ask you to blink your eyes for me, can you blink your eyes? You can see, um, you can see the eye blinks here. Yeah. Every time she blinks, you can see all the waves to this. The reason is your muscles make a lot more electrical noise because they use a lot more energy than your little neuron activity. So your muscles are louder, they're 10 times louder than your neuron activity. And you've got to be really careful. Can you bite down on your jaw, so bite your teeth together? Can you see, <laughs> can you see how noisy it is if you just want to clench your jaw because you've got these big jaw muscles that are also very loud? And they um, are much more, much louder than uh, your, your neuron activity. So when we're doing these experiments, the first thing, signal processing, <laughs> is critically important. We've got to make sure that we can identify and remove all of the extraneous noise that happens, and that we're really only listening to um, the neuron activity. And then we're interested in what neuron activity is happening where. So your prefrontal cortex is where emotion, for example, or your cognitive thought is. And that's where we're able to sense emotional engagement, for example. Memory, similarly, or attention. Different parts of your brain are located in different areas. And you know, we, can, we can detect how active those are. And looking at the frequencies, we can understand what sorts of processes are going on in your brain. So looking at the frequencies and where they're happening we're able to identify how you're responding to the ad as you're watching it. So respondents come in, I mean, they're quite relaxed, they don't have millions of people looking at them, they know what they're going to be doing, we explain it to them, we get the consent, we put on the cap, we keep them calm, put them in a little booth, show them the ad, let them go, pay them some money, they're very happy, it's very easy to do, versus ask a lot of questions. <laughs> Question is, um, but we get very rich information. We're measuring 500 times every second how she's responding. We're putting all of that together, so we've got you know, a lot of information from one respondent. We do people one by one, in groups, come in, so it's a bit like sort of a whole group, I suppose, except it's individual. 
one, one, one. We add, we aggregate all their data together. We never look at an individual's data by itself. We always look at them together in aggregate. Make sure it's all private. We never linked the data that we're collecting to an individual. We always looked at in aggregate, etc. Now, unfortunately, that's about all I can show you. I would love to be able to show you, you know, at this moment she's emotionally engaged. But for me to be able to see that in these signals, I can't see with my naked eye. It's got to be signal processed. We send all of the data to a single processing unit, one global processing unit, but quite automatically just receive data, process it, turn it into numbers that make sense to us, and send the numbers back to us. Then we do the analysis, so we would then look at knowing that we've got a score for emotion, one to 10, memory one to 10, etc. We would then be able to diagnose and understand what's happening. Right, I'm going to put you out of your misery. Thank you so much. Um, I'm trying to detangle you from this contraption. Yes. Yes, todo se mide y es que el estado en el laboratorio en el que lo hacen en Londres, esto siempre se mide, como ha dicho, individualmente, no hay explicación sin distracciones. O sea, esto pensar en esa técnica es como un experimento científico. O sea, que está, tiene como tiene parte científica detrás, todas las condiciones tienen que ser exactamente iguales para cada persona que hace el test. Eh, está totalmente medido en qué momento, eh, evidentemente si estás mirando un anuncio o un packaging o cualquier tipo de visual, está perfectamente medido cuándo está viendo qué, o sea, en qué momento, o sea, el timing de cada cosa, las condiciones de, eh, de la persona, o sea, que esté en un entorno cerrado, sin distracciones, eh, está la persona sola, o sea, no hay condicionantes tampoco como para que también la, la información tenga el menor ruido posible, o sea, que está todo, tiene todo mucha ciencia detrás, que no se emplean personas como... Eh, un poco grupo, esas con la gente preguntando y tal, y están ahí la, eh, la gente un poco condicionada por la gente que pueda ver alrededor. Y estás con una, es como un experimento de pequeño. Tienen claro. que enviar los dos. Sí, verdad. Por si acaso, tienen que enviar 30 personas a los dos. Super, thank you so much. Um, so, that was just a demonstration of one of the techniques called the EQ. Right. Um, but I want to just point out that actually there are many techniques for us to be able to measure a non-conscious reaction in people. If you think about it, when you watch stimulus, you know, our whole body and brain responds emotionally to stimulus. Right? It's not just brain response. So when you see something, the first thing to respond is your brain, your neuron activities. Very immediate, very quick. Um, and we can link the reaction immediately to the second in the act. Then through your nervous system, the rest of your body starts to respond. You can imagine your eye, which is the first thing to, to look at other things, you know, your eye tracking would be something you would respond to. FMRI, which is looking at um, oxygenated blood activity in your brain. That's very interesting. So we can see what parts of your brain are active by detecting oxygen levels in the blood. So if you're using a certain part of your brain, it will require more oxygen. But fMRI, that's great because you can see many parts of the brain. It's a little bit slower, and it's quite difficult to do because you need those huge machines and hospitals and people to be dying. <laughs> so it's a little impractical for our purposes. Then we've got respiration, like you're breathing. Your heart rate will start to change, and that will see how sort of emotionally excited you are. But heart rate, remember my heart rate and your heart rate will respond differently because I'm older and bigger. And I'm Perhaps not quite as fit, so my heart's going to be so it's a bit noisier, it's a bit less consistent across people, it's also a little bit slower, the heart beats at 60 times a second, but your heart's tremendous because it's a strong signal, it's not as sensitive as that EEG, so if you walk around a shop with a wearable heart rate monitor, we can pick up how excited you're getting in different places in the shop, so it's got great advantages. Skin conductance, so your sweat rate, your galvanic skin response is another way to detect an automatic non-articulated response by having you sweating. Um, Implicitating facial coding or face will start to change. Uh, you're getting closer to a conscious behavior, but there are non there are changes to your face that you can't control based on emotion. And that's a way also to detect how you're responding. Also, it's a little bit slower, changes a lot depending on culture. And often it's an expressed emotion that we want to express in public. So our facial expression is something that's a public kind of expression. If you're watching TV on your own or in a room, 
be less expressive. And eighty percent of expression when people are watching TV is just pretty black face. So it's quite a noisy signal when you not actually have a strong fashion signal. There's a moment where people do respond, and that's quite a clear. So, so all of those are very valid and good ways to detect an unconscious response. And the future of this kind of research is putting more and more of them together. So what we're doing at Consumer Neuroscience is we've got the biggest set of measures that we're using to evaluate advertising. And we're trying to put it all together. So obviously EEG and eye tracking, those are what we 